Hey, what's happening everybody? It's your old pal, Mr. Butter, coming back at you. It's not often that I see a pair that I think I absolutely have to have these, but for the Black Toe Jordan 1 Low, I felt like I needed to add it to the collection. If you're into kicks and you feel like hanging out, then hit that subscribe button. Let's take a look at these Jordan 1 Black Toes. So these actually dropped when I was out of town. I was on vacation with the family. I had called my finish line before I left to see if they were going to get these. I was surprised that they actually weren't receiving these in store. I think they did EA for ship to me through finish line and I didn't receive that. And that's pretty odd too because lately it just seems like I get EA either for in store or else for ship to me. Sometimes I get it for both. But anyhow, I was a little bit nervous that I wasn't going to be able to cop these. I know people were saying that the numbers were going to be really high. I've been wearing the dark powder blue Jordan 1 lows a lot this summer. And the more I wear them, the more I like them. I like the quality. I like the look. And of course, this black toe is basically the same color blocking as that. It's just got the red instead of the blue and it's an og colorway it's just a great looking pair of kicks i didn't see the quality before they dropped but i had heard that the quality was pretty decent so i just knew that i really really wanted these because i didn't have a pair secured for ea or anything like that i actually asked my wife if she would go for my size on sneakers as well the day that they dropped because i still wasn't convinced it would be an easy pickup just based off of how much i like them well, she ended up going for them as well. We both hit my personal size, so I ended up getting two pair of them. I'm not sure if I'm going to hold on to both pairs. Most of the time, whenever I accidentally get a double up of a pair, I just immediately list a pair, even if I lose a couple bucks on them. With how accessible dope shoes are right now, there's really not much of a need for me personally to double up on many shoes at all. This one is actually good enough that I'm considering holding on to both pairs, but we'll discuss that later anyhow. I think retail price on these was about 140 US dollars. Maybe it was 150, I can't recall now. It's been a couple weeks since they've dropped, but like I said, I didn't use any stash rewards or anything because my local finish line didn't get them and I ordered these straight from the sneakers app. The tag reads Air Jordan 1 Retro Low OG. The colors are white, black, varsity red. I always go true to size, which is a size 10 in Jordan 1 lows. I know a lot of people have already made their black toe Jordan 1 low reviews and everything. I am a little bit late, but I always got to make content. So here they are. I love this pair. I really, really like these. I'm surprised that there's still sizes sitting. Actually, just last night, I texted my buddy and told him that there was size 14 still available on the Nike app because he's into Jordan 1 highs. I don't know how he feels about Jordan 1 lows. I don't know if he ordered a pair or not, but I just figured since he wears a size 14 and a lot of times that's a difficult size to get, I thought it was worth letting them know that they were still sitting there for retail. But I am really, really surprised that these didn't all just get snagged up immediately. I don't mean to make that sound like it's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing that shoes are accessible. I hope a lot of kids grab these for back to school and they're all walking through the hallways wearing some heat like this. It is a really, really good time to be beefing up your sneakers collection. And I'm telling you, this pair is even better in hand than what I was hoping they would be. I love the materials on these, and in my opinion, you don't get a more classic Jordan 1 colorway than this black toe colorway. It came with red laces in the shoes, but I will definitely be swapping them out 
and putting these black laces in. I've seen where people put some sail or cream laces in them, and I saw where some people are painting the midsole to give it like an aged look. That does look really nice, but I'm not going to do any of that with mine. I'm just going to put the black laces in and rock them that way. Oftentimes, if I get two pairs of one shoe in the same size, I'll look at both the left and both right shoes, and I'll kind of mix and match to put together the best pair. However, with this pair, they're both so consistent, there's no need to mix and match. Really, this pair came in one box, this pair came in the other box, and they both look really, really good. I didn't see any QC issues. I don't know if anybody's had QC issues with them, but numbers were really high, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of them had flaws, but for my two pairs, they both look really, really good, and I'm pumped about that. I do know that previous versions of this shoe are quite expensive on the resale market as well as with the black toe high. So I wouldn't be surprised if down the road whenever everybody's wearing their pairs and it's harder to find DS pairs if they get a good bit more expensive. But for right now, they are really, really affordable. So I would definitely recommend grabbing a pair of these if you're interested in them. But getting into the review, we have a standard Jordan 1 tread pattern. And that red and it just looks nice looks classic we got the pivot point in the front nike branding there at the midfoot nothing out of the ordinary there and then as we go up the shoe we can see that we've got a bright white midsole bright white stitching and like i said already a lot of people are painting this to make it look aged but i kind of like this bright white with the red and black colors i think it looks really clean then as we get to the mug guard we see this nice black leather it's got a shine to it and it is very very soft you see a little bit of texture on it but it's not overdone like a lot of times they put a fake tumbled effect on shoes and i think sometimes it almost makes them look a little bit cheesy i'm glad they didn't go over the top with this pair it does have a little bit of texture on these black overlays, but it is such soft leather and it looks like it's a natural texture. But you see those black overlays for the mug guard going up the eye stays. And then for our swoosh, that's a synthetic leather. So I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but this is like a shiny textured, really soft premium feeling leather, but the swooshes are a synthetic feeling leather. And I would have liked to see the same leather on the swoosh, but I can't gripe about that too much. I think overall the shoe is perfect. And once again, we get a really nice feeling leather for the toe box and the side panels. It's in a bright white color on the toe box. We have those perforations like we always get on Jordan 1s. And again, it's got a little bit of texture to it, but it's a natural look. It's not over the top and tumbled so that it looks fake. It's a nice, soft, white, high-end feeling leather on the toe box and then on the side panels as well. And on the side panels, you can see that we have a little bit of that texture and it's just nice and classy looking. Moving back to the heel of the shoe, we have these overlays of this red colored leather and again, it feels really premium. It feels like it's a really nice material. This is like a flat finish on this. It's very smooth. It doesn't have the texture. But this also doesn't have the shine that we see on the black leather as well. But that being said, I love the color of it. And you've got it here at the base of the heel. And then in this heel tab area. And of course, we've got that black Jordan Wings logo on there. Like I said before, we have flat red laces that come in the shoe, but I will swap those out for the flat black laces to match this black Jordan 1 tongue. It's got black piping and then a black tag at the top with red Nike Air branding on it. Then we've got a black sock liner and I think our insole is white and it's got Nike Air branding down on that as well. Overall, I think the Jordan brand did a great job on these, especially considering that there were really, really high numbers of them. I know that there's still sizes sitting and that sort of thing. Some people might say these are bricks just because you can't resell them for $100 profit. 
but I think this is a really, really great pair of shoes. This is probably one of my favorite shoes to drop this summer, if I'm being honest. As far as keeping both pair, I can understand people doubling up on these because they're still affordable, they're still sitting in some sizes, and I don't know if sneakers will always be as affordable as what they are right now, but we might get to a time where they're hard to get and, you know, they're really expensive on the resale market again. So I can understand somebody grabbing two pair of these. Usually for me, it's an issue of space. Like, I just don't like more than one box of the same shoe occupying space just because before long, you have an entire office filled up with shoes like I do right now. Like I said, I'm not really at a period where I intentionally double up on shoes right now. However, I wouldn't blame anybody for grabbing two pair of these, especially while they're so easy to pick up and so affordable on the resale market. But let me know if you think this is worth grabbing two pair of. Let me know if you think it's even worth grabbing one pair of. I really like this pair and I plan on rocking them very soon. But let me know what you all think about them. I appreciate you all watching and I will catch you on the next one. I'm out.